Thank you very much for having me. This is joint work with Sarah Eckmeyer from University of Munich. This study is a collection of messaging experiments designed to test ways to increase vaccine demand among a disadvantaged population in the US. Our motivation for doing this work is that there are stark racial health gradients that antedated COVID-19, but certainly were highlighted during the pandemic. Many factors contributed to the pre-existing racial health gap, but low take-up of preventative care explains part of it. This low take-up is not only costly for individuals in terms of increased morbidity and mortality, but it can also be costly for society in the transmission of infectious diseases. Moreover, take-up of preventative care is very uneven, and it's lower among those disadvantaged by race, income, education, and it's lower for men than women. Prior work in Oakland, testing interventions to address racial health gaps, found that race concordance between black doctors and patients in real life medical encounters significantly increased the demand for preventative health care among black men. However, the mechanism for those findings were unclear as medical doctors were not scripted and there were no white participants. Moreover, it takes a long time to train a doctor. Is there anything that we could do in the interim? In this study, we precisely control and experimentally vary the script given by perceived medical experts in a one-way communication setting that includes both white and black subjects. We conducted an online experiment distributing a standardized video message about the safety and effectiveness of the flu shot. Our sample consisted of black and white men without a college education, and we conditioned on not having received a flu shot yet. We experimentally varied three aspects of the message. First, for both white and black respondents, we varied the race concordance of the expert sender, keeping the signal constant. The next two iterations were only for black respondents, given the pipeline issues and the current non-diverse physician workforce. We tested whether acknowledgement of past injustice by discordant experts could help bridge trust gaps. And we tested whether a non-expert, such as a community health worker, would work as well as an expert. If non-experts were non-inferior, it could be a quick, scalable intervention that would also provide community-based jobs. We collected data in two ways, last flu season and this flu season during COVID-19. This figure shows the study flow. We recruited online, elicited prior beliefs in vaccine intent, and then randomized. We recruited around 600, 1,600 Black respondents in varied dimensions of lay versus expert within concordant, concordant versus discordant within the standard message, and then within the latter discordant arm, acknowledgement of injustice versus the standard signal. For white respondents, we vary concordance only. We distributed flu shot coupons, those shots are often provided free or covered by insurance, and had an endline survey that asked about whether respondents had gotten a flu shot anywhere. To produce our videos, we created a script about 40 seconds long and hired 10 actors, five black men and five white men, that were of the same age range and relative build. Actors either dressed as an expert or a layperson. In the expert condition, they wore white coats and stethoscopes, and they had the same dress shirt, tie, and background. In the layperson condition, they wore white t-shirts. And again, this is within uh, racially concordant actors for black respondents only. Our main script stated, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, recommends everyone six months and older get the flu shot. This was the official recommendation. Then it said, the shot protects you from getting sick by cutting your chance of catching the flu in half. This was a statement about its effectiveness. It also is very safe. Less than one in 100 vaccinated people experiences a side effect. This was a statement about its safety. We also dispelled a common myth. The shot does not contain an active flu virus, so you cannot get the flu virus from the shot. We ended with a personal endorsement. I get the flu shot every year to protect myself, my family, and my community, also highlighting the externality there, and ended with a personal recommendation. I recommend you look into getting the flu shot as soon as possible. For the injustice acknowledgement, we added three short sentences. I know some people are nervous to follow medical advice about vaccines. In the past, there may have been times when the medical community broke your trust, but I hope that sharing some information with you can help you understand how important the flu shot is. Now, there are many degrees of freedom with which such a message could be delivered, but actually our message was quite prescient. 
In fact, it was very similar to what was recommended recently in the Annals of Internal Medicine when talking to communities of color about the COVID-19 vaccine. Now I'm going to turn to the results and they're organized by hypothesis, discordant versus uh, concordant racial expert, and also within hypothesis by outcome family. So starting with discordance versus uh, concordance and also starting with black respondents. So we have here rating of the sender, which includes the sender's qualifications to give medical advice, rating of the signal, recall of the factual content of the message, beliefs about the safety of the flu shot, interest in getting the flu shot as proxy by looking uh, up a nearby pharmacy, for example, intent to get a flu shot, and in the second season of our study, COVID-19 vaccination intent, since it's possible that vaccine hesitancy affects both types of shots. Now, what we find is was that for black respondents assigned to a race concordant expert, that increased the rating of the sender by 0.18 standard deviation units and the rating of the message, that same exact message, just read by a different expert, a different race expert, by 0.14 standard deviation units. The other outcomes, particularly those on flu shot and COVID-19 vaccination intent are positive, but are not statistically significant. We also find no difference in terms of redemption of the coupon or self-reported vaccine behavior. This slide has the exact same layout, but is for white respondents. Note that we see no effects of concordance across any outcome. So some coefficients are positive and some are negative. This rules out the notion that our black expert actors were somehow just better than the white experts. Again, there was not an effect on vaccine takeout. This slide answers the question, what is the impact of acknowledging racial injustice on flu vaccine demand among black respondents who are paired with a racially discordant provider? This is a very important slide because it speaks to the modal experience of a black patient who goes to the healthcare sector today. Compared to the standard message from a discordant provider, the acknowledgement message increased the rating of the signal by 0.142 standard deviation units. This is precisely what we manipulated, the signal. So it's fascinating to see results on this margin. And it's in fact very similar in size to the point estimate we saw for race concordance for black respondents. Similar to the last findings, we also observed weekly positive effects on both flu shot and COVID-19 vaccination intent, but no effect on the outcome of flu shot take -up. Next, we test whether a concordant layperson could substitute for a medical expert in terms of providing information to black respondents. Again, this is to address the policy relevant pipeline issue. Indeed, we find that laypersons are rated as 0.540 standard deviation units lower than the experts. The signal is also rated on average slightly more negative. However, this is the only intervention to actually increase recall of content in a significant fashion by 0.117 standard deviation units. Moreover, it also increased COVID-19 vaccination intent by statistically significant 8.8 .8 percentage points or 20%. Lastly, it was the only intervention to actually affect flu shot take up by non-significant 1.8 percentage points at the individual level and a significant four percentage points or 52% at the household level. Next, we compare across all interventions. This is for the outcome of flu vaccination intent. We start looking at the light blue bars on the right. These represent white respondents. And again, here we see no effect of concordance. On the left, the, the dark blue leftmost bar represents again the modal experience of a black person seeking healthcare today, which is to be paired with a discordant medical expert giving a standard message. This group, this randomized group has the lowest intent to get vaccinated, only 34%. But by pairing with a concordant expert or one that acknowledges injustice, we can increase this to close to 37% and get the highest intention when actually paired with a concordant non-expert, 39%. These differences are even more stark when looking at the novel COVID-19 vaccines, which were under emergency authorization at the time. Again, starting with white respondents, we see no difference in means across arms. Concordance for them doesn't seem to be playing a huge role, 45% no matter what. But moving to black respondents, we can increase from 40% to 43 to 45% with a concordant expert or a discordant expert who acknowledges past injustice and can get even higher to 52% when paired with a concordant layperson. Lastly, in this paper, we look at heterogeneity. Specifically, we are interested in examining how individuals at different distances from the take-up threshold 
would respond to the interventions. And we proxy for this distance by prior vaccine experience. In particular, whether they have never received a flu shot, received one recently, or received one in the distance past. We, we label these as never takers, ever takers, and recent takers. What we find is that the lay person effects are really driven by individuals who have never received a flu shot in the past. Those respondents make up about a quarter of our sample, and even their rating of the lay person signal is now positive. And this stands in contrast to what we find for the concordance effects. The concordance effects for on black respondents, the positive signal and sender effect, as well as the positive effects on COVID and flu shot intentions are all coming from recent takers. The, again, we can look at the p-values here and see that they're actually different, that these two groups of respondents are responding very differently to the same intervention. Similar to the concordance pattern, we see the pattern for acknowledgement, where acknowledgement from a discordant expert has positive effects among recent takers and negative or null effects among never takers, and those differences are often significant. So the bottom line is this. For people with more familiarity with the healthcare system, an expert who is concordant or one that is discordant and acknowledges injustice works best. For those who have less experience with vaccinating and are likely more wary of the healthcare system, a non-related person works best. So in summary, we found that concordant experts have positive effects on ratings of the signal and sender, but for black respondents only. There was no effect of concordance any out white respondents. Could we just be acknowledging past injustice? Well, we didn't find a backlash. In fact, we found positive effects you know, and on COVID-19 vaccination intention. But it's important to underscore that these interventions work best on individuals who already have some prior experience with vaccination. What about building trust via social proximity? Remember, our sample is limited to individuals that don't have a college degree. In this sample, non-expert concordance lay people were judged as less qualified, but had positive effects on recall, intention, and importantly, flu shot take up. And these effects were concentrated on among respondents with the least prior experience with vaccination. So our findings suggest that the message and the messenger should be tailored to in, an individual based on how far he is from the take-up threshold. They also underscore the importance role non-expert senders can play in providing trusted medical advice. Thank you.